At his interview, the six partners were impressed by Shipman, particularly his honesty that he had been addicted to pethidine. Shipman was jailed for life for murdering 15 women patients at his practice in Hyde in Greater Manchester. A public inquiry later decided that he'd killed at least 215 of his patients with morphine injections. Welcome back to Behind the Bars TV with another grip and case. In today's mini documentary, I'm going to be talking about the journey of a serial killer from a promising young medical student to one of the most renowned serial killers in British history. A man who was considered to be one of the most prolific serial killers in modern history, with an estimated 250 victims over 23 years. Public inquiry later decided that he'd killed at least 215 of his patients with morphine injection. A case that stands as a haunting testament to the darkest aspects of human malevolence and betrayal of trust. The serial killer also nicknamed Dr. Death and the Angel of Death, Harold Shipman, will remain the centre of attention in today's mini documentary. This case examines the horrifying details of Shipman's crimes, the subsequent investigation that revealed his atrocities, and the far-reaching effects that continue to reverberate throughout the medical community. Let's uncover the dark legacy of this notorious figure. Born as the middle child in a working class family on January the 14th, 1946, Harold Frederick Shipman, also known as Fred, was the favourite child of his domineering mother, Vera. She instilled in him an early sense of superiority. When his mother was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer, he became interested in medicine as he watched his mother receive morphine injections to ease the pain she suffered while dying of lung cancer until she come to the disease on June the 21st, 1963. Her death came in a manner similar to what later became Shipman's modus operandi. Still a loner, he met his future wife, Primrose Mayor Oxtoby, on the 5th of November, 1966. He married Primrose. He was 19, whereas Primrose was 17 when they got married. The couple had four children. Devastated by his mother's painful demise, he was always determined to go to medical school and was later admitted to Leeds University Medical School. In 1970, he received a medical degree from Leeds University. Shipman began working at Pontefract General Infirmary in Pontefract, West Riding of Yorkshire. By 1974, he was a father of two already. He was then caught by his medical colleagues in 1975 for forging prescriptions of pethidine for his use. At his interview, the six partners were impressed by Shipman, particularly his honesty that he had been addicted to pethidine. He was fined £600 and briefly attended a drug rehabilitation clinic in York. He worked as a GP at Donnybrook Medical Centre in Hyde, Greater Manchester in 1977. There he graduated himself as a hard-working doctor who enjoyed the trust of patients and colleagues. On the 24th of March 1998, Dr Linda Reynolds of the Brook Surgery in Hyde, who practiced from premises opposite Shipman surgery expressed concerns to John Pollard, the coroner for South Manchester District, about the high death rate among Shipman's patients. In particular, she was concerned about the large number of cremations, formerly of the elderly women, that he had asked to have countersigned. At the quest of the coroner, a confidential investigation was carried out by Detective Inspector David Smith, the Greater Manchester Police, under the supervision of Chief Superintendent David Sykes. D.I. Smith concluded that there was no substance in Dr. Reynolds' concerns and his investigation ended on the 17th of April 1998. After that time, Shipman killed three more patients before his arrest. They were Mrs. Winifred Meller, Mrs. Joan Mellier and Mrs. Grundy. A few months later in August, Taxi driver John Shaw told the police that he suspected Shipman of murdering 21 patients. Shaw became suspicious as many of the elderly customers he took to the hospital, while seemingly in good health, died in Shipman's care. But while Inspector Edgerton waited for Mrs Grundy's post-mortem results, he was approached by a local taxi driver who'd built up his own dossier of suspicions against Shipman, going back many years. 
The true horrors of his actions started to slowly unravel when his last victim, Kathleen Grundy, an active, wealthy 81-year-old widow, was found dead in her home on the 24th of June 1998, following an earlier visit by Shipman. It was a vigilance of Grundy's daughter, Angela Woodruff, that would set in motion a series of events that would ultimately bring an end to Shipman's long run and killing spree that began in the 1970s. Until that point, he had been able to kill his patients undetected by being careful to cover up his tracks. Woodruff was advised by Shipman that an autopsy was not required and Grundy was buried following her daughter's wishes. Woodruff was a lawyer and had always handled her mother's affairs, so it was with some surprise that she discovered that another will had existed, leaving the bulk of her mother's estate to Dr. Shipman. Woodruff was convinced the document was a forgery and that Shipman had murdered her mother, forging the will to benefit from her death. She alerted the local police where Detective Superintendent Bernard Postles quickly came to the same conclusion upon examination of the evidence. Grundy's body was exhumed and a post-mortem revealed that she had died of a morphine overdose administered within three hours of her death, precisely within the time frame of Shipman's visit to her. Shipman's home was raided, yielding medical records, an odd collection of jewellery and an old typewriter which provided to be instrument upon which Grundy's forged will had been produced. It was immediately apparent to the police from medical records seized that the case would extend further than the single death in question and priority was given to those deaths it would be most productive to investigate, namely victims who had not been cremated, who had died following a home visit by Shipman which was given priority. On the 31st of January 2000, Harold Shipman was arrested and charged with 15 counts of murder and one count of forgery. During the trial, chilling details emerged about his modus operandi and the extent of his crimes. Shipman was found guilty on all counts and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He later committed suicide by hanging himself in his prison cell at HMP Wakefield, West Yorkshire on the 13th of January 2004, aged 57. The serial killer Harold Shipman has been found dead in his cell at Wakefield Prison. The former doctor was discovered by prison officers hanging from strips of bedding just after six o'clock this morning. The final report was published on the 27th of January 2005. Shipman's course of killing could have been stopped earlier and the lives of three of his victims saved. In most cases, Shipman injected the victim with a lethal dose of painkiller diamorphine and then signed a death certificate attributing the incident to natural causes. Some speculated that Shipman may have been seeking to avenge the death of his mother, while others suggested that he thought he was practicing euthanasia. A third possibility raised was that he derived pleasure from the knowledge that as a doctor, he had the power of life or death over his patients and that killing was the means through which he expressed this power. Despite his forgery of the will of the one of the victims, financial gain appears not to have been a serious motive. One key question that plagued investigators was how such a large number of deaths could have occurred without raising suspicion of foul play. This was all the more baffling because Shipman's patients were normally healthily shortly before their encounters with him. The fact that Shipman took advantage of his patients' trust in him as a doctor made his crimes particularly odious to the public. In situations where they did not raise questions, Shipman would provide computerized medical notes that corroborated his death, his cause of death pronouncements. The case of Harold Shipman sent shockwaves through the medical community and the general public. How could a trusted doctor, sworn not to harm, commit such heinous acts? So we'll end this video thinking of the victims of Shipman's heinous crimes to be remembered, and may their tragic stories catalyze ongoing efforts to prevent such atrocities from ever happening again. And as usual, people, thank you for watching the video. 
And if you did like the content, remember to comment, like, and subscribe.